getting answers. This is CBS 13 Mornings. There's new information on the air ambulance that crashed, killing all five people aboard. What the NTSB says happened before the plane even hit the ground. Plus, Girl Scout safety concerns after an alleged DUI driver plowed into a local group of girls selling cookies. And a blizzard warning is in effect for parts of the Sierra today. How people should prepare ahead of this dangerous snowstorm. But first, here is a live look at downtown Sacramento this morning. Good morning. It is Monday, February 27th. I'm John Dabkovich. I'm Courtney Dempsey in for Dina Kupfer. Tracy Humphreys here with your first alert weather forecast. And we've got some, uh, still, still some precipitation coming down, Tracy. Yeah, that is right. Still got some rain and some snow in some parts of our viewing area. Most of it coming to a close. We got another wave coming through around mid morning. And that one is really where the opportunity for uh, heavy rounds of rainfall, heavy snowfall, and maybe even some thunderstorms will come into play. Take a look at your first alert Doppler radar and we did have some showers that moved through last evening. Still got a few light rain showers near Jackson. Still got some snow showers over there near Kybers and heading up uh, Highway 50 for your slice of California for today though. I'm going to keep the rain showers in the forecast even though they're expected to pick up for the afternoon. So you'll have a lull in the action and then another round comes in later on early afternoon. Rain and snow coming into the foothills as low as 2,000 feet in elevation and for the Sierra blizzard warning is in effect through Wednesday. Um, that's going to be early Early Wednesday morning at 4 a.m. That is a quick look at your weather this morning for your first alert traffic. Hi, Tina. Hi there. Thanks very much. A very light commute. Yes, you need the chains in 50 and 80. Avalanche control on 50 there. 80, 580, Highway 12 there. Looks pretty good so far if you're traveling out towards the Tracy area or maybe the bay along I-80. More on your commute coming up. Guys, back over to you. Thank you. All right, we'll begin with some breaking news right now. Drivers being stopped on Highway 50 because of avalanche control going on there. This is what it looks like right now at Echo Summit. Caltrans says traffic is being held from Echo Summit to Myers. No estimated time for when it's going to reopen. Well, people are urged to avoid driving over the Sierra today as that snow and wind picks up. Gabe Grassoff is making his way up I-80. He's near Rockland this morning with what drivers should expect once they get up into the mountains. Hey, Dave. It's pretty quiet right now. Roadways are damp, uh, not really windy right now. Obviously, uh, dark out. Uh, I can tell you, I just saw one of the signs that I passed. One of the Caltrans signs was alerting people that, yep, I-80 is closed uh, to all tractor semi combination, tractor trailer uh, uh, combinations from Applegate to the Nevada state line due to the snow conditions. Yeah, you want to use a different route if you drive one of those big rigs. If you're in a car, though, the road is open. Chains are required on all vehicles, uh, include, unless you have uh, the four-wheel drive, of course. So make sure you have a combination of uh, either, or just make sure that you have either four-wheel drive or those chains with you. Just a couple of other things just to, to keep in mind. If indeed you want to chance it and just uh, head up over the Sierra, just be smart about it. Just carry extra supplies, have extra clothing, have extra water, have uh, just in case you were to get stranded, just to have some extra food in there. I would throw a shovel on the back of your car and just take it extremely, extremely slow because yes, it is going to be very treacherous if indeed you are traveling into the Sierra today. John Court. Okay, Dave, thank you. Well, several schools in our area have announced they're going to be closed today because of the storm. We have a full list on our website, cbs13.com. Severe weather is striking the middle of the nation with seven tornadoes touching down in Oklahoma on Sunday. Police Ortiz is at the live desk this morning with the damage the people there are waking up to this morning. Hey, who? Yeah, pretty incredible pictures this morning. I want to get right to these live pictures as this helicopter flies over Oklahoma this morning. Now with the daylight, they are actually getting a better idea of how much damage these tornadoes caused last night. As you mentioned, seven confirmed so far. The meteorologist here at this affiliate saying that there are still more to come. Uh, about a dozen injuries. I believe they're flying over for Norman, um, Oklahoma right now, which is just south of Oklahoma City. And you can just see just the area riddled with debris. We were talking about down power lines, toppled uh, trees, fences, roofs just being ripped off. Uh, thousands of people were out without power at its peak. About 33,000 people were without power. I believe that number is now down to about 13,000. So they've been able to uh, restore some of that. But um, with seven tornadoes, this makes February the most active 
February in Oklahoma history since back in 1975. So pretty incredible. Fortunately, they are going to get a little bit of a break today, so they're expecting sunny and drier conditions. But boy, do they have their work cut out for them, as you can see, kind of as this helicopter makes its way across the city here. You can just see how much debris is just littered across the area. And like I said, uh, they're likely going to learn more uh, today, more da see more damage, and of course hear about any more injuries uh, possibly from this last night. But just a uh, pretty incredible overnight that they had there, of course, uh, just one of many areas across the country dealing with these severe storms that are just kind of making their way east. All right, again, live pictures for you this morning out of Oklahoma. I'll back over to you. Wow, seven of those tornadoes making landfall. That is yeah. a lot. All right, thanks, Hugh. All right, uh, moving on now to our next story here. Sorry, we got a little behind there. I was catching up on some emails. A woman and two Girl Scouts are recovering after a suspected DUI crash into a cookie table in Granite Bay. Ashley Williams is live at the Girl Scouts heart of Central California in Sacramento that's now accepting some get well cards for the two girls who were injured. Good morning, Ashley. Hi guys, good morning. Yeah, really so devastating, but just such an outpouring of support from the community. Court, you just said it, we're right in front of the Girl Scout, Scouts heart of Central California. Now the crash happened Saturday at a Walmart in Granite Bay. The driver was arrested on charges of driving under the influence and causing injuries. The two Girl Scouts, ages 8 and 10, are home from the hospital and recovering from minor injuries. And police say a 78-year-old customer suffered major injuries, but she is expected to be okay. The Girl Scouts of Central California CEO says safety is their top priority. We don't want them to be fearful of being out there. We want them to be safe, but don't be fearful. Don't be afraid. They're strong and they'll make it through this. I hope they feel better and I hope they can get back to selling cookies. And support is already coming in from neighboring Girl Scout troops who plan to help the impacted troops sell the rest of their cookies this season so they can reach their fundraising goals. Now, if you want to send a Get Well card to the two Girl Scouts while they recover, those can be sent to the Girl Scouts Heart of Central California office. Again, that's where we are right now, live at 6601 Elvis Avenue in Sacramento. We'll make sure to link all of that to our website, cbs13.com. Back on over to you. Thank you, Ashley. Well, we now know that an air ambulance that crashed near Reno Friday night broke apart midair before hitting the ground. All five people on board were killed. Steve Large now with how families of the victims are now remembering their loved ones. The air ambulance wreckage could be seen surrounded by snow and ice in rural Nevada. Investigators now determining parts of the plane came off it mid-air. The aircraft did break up uh, prior to ground contact. We don't know exactly what altitude at which that occurred. Uh, that's one of the things that we'll be looking at. Family of the victims are now sharing photos and stories on GoFundMe pages. The pilot, Scott Walton, a husband and father of three. Flight paramedic Ryan Watson, who just became a father a month ago. Flight nurse Ed Percola, married with two young children. And patient Mark Rand and his wife Terry. Family writes Mark was on board for what was supposed to be a life-saving treatment in Utah. The deadly crash, a tragic turn. Witnesses described the moment of impact. It sounded pretty crazy. It sounded almost, I actually told my wife that it sounded like a ship, kind of like a ship sinking the noise of it um, and then we heard a big motor and uh, a big boom. These airplanes are designed to fly in that type of, of weather condition. A winter storm warning was in effect at the time of the crash. REMSA, the Regional Emergency Medical Services Authority, used the plane to shuttle patients to hospitals outside the Reno area. This flight was heading from Reno Tahoe's airport to Salt Lake City and was in the air for about 14 minutes before radar shows it began descending quickly. There were no mayday calls before the crash. The NTSB is expected to release a preliminary report sometime in the next two weeks. Taking a look at your regional headlines this morning, an investigation is underway into a deadly shooting in Rio Linda. The shots fired just before 3 p.m. near 8th and U Streets on Sunday. Sacramento Sheriff's deputies found a man who had been shot several times lying in the driveway of a home. He died at the scene. Investigators detained two suspects inside that home, 
but no information about a motive has been released. We're learning new details this morning about the suspects in a police chase from Stockton to Fairfield. Police say the four suspects were involved in three robberies in just a 20-minute period before that chase Saturday. It happened just before noon. Police say all four suspects are from Richmond. They're now being held in the San Joaquin County Jail on robbery and grand theft charges. Sacramento police are asking residents in three areas of the city to give feedback on how officers can better reduce crime. Community volunteers and Sacramento police officers handed out more than 19,000 surveys in the Mack Road Valley High area of South Sacramento, as well as Oak Park and Del Paso Heights. The survey includes a multiple choice question about various policing practices and strategies that residents would like to see the police department use. Officers are going to be out this week making sure students are safe around schools in Patterson. Police say that while they were out in front of Walnut Grove School last week, plenty of tickets were issued for people going 15 miles per hour over the speed limit in a school zone. They say enforcement is to try and make sure kids make it to school safety. 510 now. Let's check back in with meteorologist Tracy Humphrey and get you caught up on this on your uh, first alert action day. Hey, good morning. So yeah, today is another first alert action day. Got some pretty cold temperatures out there for parts of our viewing area. 24 coming in for South Lake Tahoe, mid 30s for Jackson as well as for Auburn. 39 coming in for Stockton, 42 Modesto, 40 in Sacramento and Vacaville and 39 degrees coming in for Marysville. Fairly light winds right now, but they are expected to be picking up throughout the day today as a cold front comes through. That's why we do have a wind advisory in effect till four o'clock in the afternoon. Some pretty strong winds expected, especially for the valley floor. So speaking of wind, right, we had air temperatures coming in around 40, a light breeze, maybe between 5, 10 miles per hour. It does impact what it feels like. Feels like 36 in Sacramento, 28 in Fairfield, 36 in Stockton, and 38 in Modesto. Most of our area is relatively quiet, but still just a few light showers out there just south of Jackson. A few snow showers coming in again near Bear Valley, rain showers in Groveland, and those snow showers will be coming to a close this morning, but picking up in intensity all over again later on around mid-morning to early afternoon. Here's a look at your sites of California. Going to keep the rain showers in the forecast. Cooler than average temperatures again today. 49 for the Valley, 50 in the Delta, 50 for the Bay Area. Upper 30s coming in for the hills with snow levels today as low as 2,000 feet. And for the Sierra, 25 degrees with snow showers. Take a look at that blizzard warning. Yeah, we are looking at some pretty significant snow totals all over again. One to three feet um, a, a possible above 2,000 feet in elevation. Take a look at the winds, 50 to 70 miles per hour. That will be in the forecast today as well as tomorrow. Today is a first alert action day, a series of three storms impacting the area, heavy mountain snow, valley rain and wind. You name it, we got it. And that first alert action day also in effect for Tuesday. That is a look at your weather this morning for your first alert traffic. Here's Tina. Thank you very much, Tracy. All right, we got a collision clearing happened a little while ago. Highway 12 at South Bend I-5, you might still see some activity there for your Lodi commute. And also, if you're heading out towards Tracy, your drive time's looking okay. 205, 580, heading out towards the uh, Dublin Pleasanton area from Livermore up there. All right, show you some of the cameras. Here we go. We got I-80 at the Cap City Freeway split. Both sides looking pretty good from Madison on to Business 80. When you reach Business 80, make that curve, that turn there to Watt Avenue. Looks good as you head out towards the Marconi curve. And out there, I-5 at the airport. Very light commute there as well to and from Woodland. Guys, back over to you. Thanks, team. All right, China's possible involvement in Russia, the latest developments in the war between Russia and Ukraine. And a cannabis protest, why one neighborhood in San Francisco is saying a proposed pot shop is too close for comfort.